So if you have a subprime borrower that borrowed a that had borrowed a three hundred three hundred thousand dollar loan against a three hundred thousand dollar house, and he has a two year teaser rate, he's been paying a low rate for the first couple years. A couple years in, he figures he's going to get a raise, he's going to pay more. The rate goes up, he can't afford that rate. He might have defaulted in a normal scenario, but actually his three hundred thousand dollar house is actually now worth four hundred thousand dollars. So instead of defaulting, what he does is he sells the house. He sells the house, he repays the $300,000 mortgage, and not only, not only does the bank get all their money back, but that homeowner now has $100,000 they never had before. And so that encouraged them to do what? To go buy a larger house. Now he's going to buy a million dollar house with his $100,000 down payment, right? And borrow $900,000 and take out a larger subprime loan and play the game again. And of course, they did play that game until, until uh, in mid-2007 or, you know, or early, the mid housing prices stopped going up in the mid-2006. By mid-2007, the mortgage market was, had already started to collapse and the subprime losses were already starting to show up because people couldn't sell their house anymore for more than they bought it for. So that explains kind of what happened with, you know, where, where we saw, wh why people issued so many subprime loans. Then what happened in 2007 as people started to look at default rates and of course what they were observing is not the expected default rates of 15 percent and losses of 33 percent but they were looking at default rates of maybe 50 percent and they were looking at losses of maybe 60 percent. That means the expected loss is not 5 percent anymore. Now the expected loss is 30 percent. Now, with an expected loss of 30%, well, we've wiped out the 5% here, and we've wiped out the 15% here. We've actually started to nibble in to this first bit. The losses are much larger than expected, and we've started to nibble into this first bit. But this bit right here, we wiped it out. Now, that bit that we wiped out is all the parts making up here. So we haven't just taken out the third tranche or even the second tranche, but we've actually wiped out that whole first tranche, which is really why those AAA CDOs who are held by, say, for example, Merrill Lynch, turned out to be pretty close to worthless because the defaults were higher or expected to be much higher than people saw, and so it really nibbled through all that money and you ended up basically with these CDOs that are AAA rated but ended up being worthless.